We're live! Good morning. God, I keep on saying good morning. It's like technically afternoon now that it's like noon, noon. But hey, y'all. Let me post this little thing on here. Bam! Good afternoon. I hope you guys are having great mornings slash afternoons if it's noon for you. <laughs> Esther's already laughing at me. <laughs> hey, Sour AB something. I love you guys' names. They're really cute. Got a guest who should be connecting now, Mike Johnson, who's going to be talking to us about self love and self care. It's going to be dope. There we go. Hey, Mike, how are you? Amazing. How are you doing? Good morning. Good afternoon. It's afternoon now. It's officially afternoon in New York. Well, it's afternoon here, but it, isn't it like what, 11 o'clock or something where you are? It's, it's 11 and it's like beautiful outside, no snow, no nothing like that. <laughs> Meanwhile, it was actually snowing here in New York this morning. It was very strange. That's so crazy. That's yeah. just yeah. That's yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so I was telling everybody a little bit about you. Y'all, this is Mike uh, Johnson. He is an Air Force vet. He is a self-love, yeah. self-care expert and is writing a book. Can you tell us a little bit about your book? Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that intro. That's pretty cool. Um, got a book that's coming out here in October. August slash September time frame, depending on what quarantine does with this. The book, I love it. It's a, uh, I have some personal testimonies in there. You got to figure out which ones are mine because I don't say Mike Johnson did this. Um, <laughs> have some testimonies of other people that I know. Uh, I have at the end of every single chapter, there's a mantra in the book to help you build your confidence, have more love about yourself and self love. And then there's an exercise at the end of each chapter as well. So we got exercises we have mantras i take quotes from people like uh nil de, de uh grassi to nipsey hustle and all in between I mean, oh I wow That's a lot. and when is your book coming out because we you're gonna be looking for it any pre-orders since september is probably when it'll be out official awesome awesome wow you've got a lot of people on here who are really excited for the book yeah Best guy ever, next bachelor. <laughs> it's 11 p.m. in Thailand. Shout out Thailand. <laughs> That's awesome. We've got some people from South Africa on here too, which is pretty dope. Yes. Okay, so we're supposed to be talking about <laughs> self love and self care. We got a ton of questions from people about self love and self care. And since we've got an expert, I'm going to get right to them. Okay, so one of the questions was how do you relax? How do we both relax ourselves after appearances or events? What do you do? I love that question. That's a, normally people want to ask that question. I think that's a really insightful and thoughtful question. So after appearances, like I'm naturally an introvert. Most people don't believe that. But I don't I really, believe really it. You're saying most people. You're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an introvert, right? And so after an appearance, I like to, quite honestly, be by myself. I like to just wind down, not have the TV on. Uh, I might be doing mindless work on my, on my cell phone, but just a quiet space, you know, honestly. I just just ex exact opposite of the appearance. I want no noise around me. <laughs> what about you? What about you? What do you do? I feel that. Well, I was going to say, everybody, you guys are talking to one and a half introverts right now because I'm definitely an introvert. <laughs> like, maybe half of an introvert. I'm a full introvert. Every time I talk to my, he's like, yeah, I just got off the phone with my friends or, yeah, me and my friends are good. I'm just like, okay, that's cool. It's um, quarantine time. <laughs> like, what else are we going to do? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so, so what I like to do is, is very similar, actually. Like when I'm done with like appearances and events, I just need like alone time because as an introvert, it like even though there are times where I really like being around people, I like learning from people. I still need like time to recharge, and I have to do that like by myself. So, um, for example, I think one of the recent appearances I did, I think it was back in February before everything shut down, we were in Chicago, and uh, we had this. Exactly where I was. Yeah, yeah. When were you there? Like literally the week of that it shut down. St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Your friend Tyler is going in on you right now. Tyler says, Mike has a cheese as fuck. <laughs> Where's Tyler at? <laughs> I ain't listening to Tyler right now. I ain't listening to Tyler. I just put his, I'll put his little, uh, uh, Tyler's little brother, Ryan, I put him on last night. So it's Zoom call. <laughs> Mike's just happy because he got his workout in this morning. Um, okay, so anyways, I was in Chicago and uh, there was, um, this huge event there were a ton of people we were taking pictures we were talking i spoke at the event and then after that like i can't talk like i just have to be quiet like we got in the car after the event and it was just like silence me and like the driver and 
um, my event coordinator, we were just like, and everybody understood. I think that's, that's what's most helpful is when people just know who you are and how you are and they're okay and not offended with the silence. They can just deal See, with See, that's, that's the opposite of me. I have to, I only can get my quiet time solo. Like if I have other people around, even my friends, I still feel like I'm, I'm on. I still have to really even your be friends? energetic. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I don't want to let down nobody. But when I'm by myself, that's, it's all shut down. Oh, wait, hold on. Isn't Tyler supposed to be, like, working out right now? Like, <laughs> you need to tell he doesn't... friends, because these are some pretty poor accountability buddies if you don't even know if he's worked out today. He's supposed to work out. I just saw his IG. He went live with his mm -hmm. coach. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. That's why I had to get a new accountability buddy, because you were doing your abs every day. Look, I'm doing my 600 sit-ups. <laughs> Okay, let me see if we have, there's somebody who keeps sending me questions. Oh, okay. This is a good question. Bailey Cormick oh, says, yeah. what is your best advice for dealing with stress or anxiety? Me first or you first? You first. What is my way to deal with anxiety and or stress is the question. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I get away from the situation. Like, I have to get away. I have to take a moment to myself. I'm really, I need... That moment of clarity only comes from when I'm by myself mm -hmm. and I can actually breathe. Like one, two count, breathe, one, two count, breathe, you know? Um, if I'm around a bunch of people, it only, it only heightens the stress. It really does. So even if I'm around a bunch of people, I need to go to the bathroom, make an excuse, go outside. Um, I have asthma. I'll go say, hey, I need to take my inhaler. Disconnect. You know, <laughs> I got to go for a second. That's what I do. Yeah. What about you? Um, well, I think I learned how to deal with stress a lot during law school. So when you, uh, after you graduate law school, for people who don't know, like the general process, if you want to be an attorney, you go to law school and you take the bar in your state, which is this big, crazy exam. And then if you pass the bar, your license as an attorney, you get sworn in and you can practice. And so like preparing for the bar is not something that you can get away from. You just have to do it. And uh, I think what helped me to deal with my stress and anxiety was like one, building a plan and just knowing what I had to do um, to be successful and then to just like letting go of the things that I couldn't control so like I would have like countdowns and stuff and I think like that stuff would just give me more anxiety and I was like oh my god I can't I had to take this test I would like obsess over like pass rates I took the June no the July 2017 bar in North Carolina was the first bar I took and I passed thank god but like the bar that was administered right before mine it was the February bar in North Carolina had a 33 percent pass rate like, it was terrible. And I think it just made me stress more thinking about it. So I just had to let that go and just know. But you're the, top, you're the top one of everything, though. So 33%, <laughs> we ain't worried about that. We well, thank you younger. for that. But, you know, you just never know. And it just stressed me out. So um, so I think I just had to let go of that and stop, like, obsessing over past reads. And I just was like, I just I, I need to do what I need to do. And I need to focus on that. So just, like, letting go of the things that you can't control is, like, most helpful to me. All right. Leads into another question. Oh, this is, I was going to say, this leads to another really, really good question. You guys are sending in some, some really, really great stuff. Okay, oh. Sayless Mike, is this one of your friends? <laughs> that's, a, I was on Zoom with them last night. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so the question is, advice on how to quit overthinking situations. You first. Oh, I'll do it first now, damn it. Okay, um, <laughs> advice on, on how to quit overthinking. Okay, yeah. um, I think for me, just distracting myself is is incredibly helpful i think having a to-do list each day and a routine um helps me to refocus so for example like the last relationship that i was in uh last year's relationship i was in we ended like august last year so after that i think if any of you guys have been in relationships you know that if you're in a really long relationship with somebody it's hard to like move past that and not like overthink about like what are they doing or what are they thinking what is, what should i be doing right now should i be dating other people um but i think what helped me to sort of let go and refocus was just constantly going back to what's my to-do list what what do i need to do today and having that each day helped me to stop overthinking helped me to stop being unfocused if i just constantly when those thoughts came into my head thought about okay well what's the next thing on my to-do list because there's there's some other things i can accomplish today chesley i'm definitely going first from now on. you speak so eloquent like how can i go after that <laughs> like bro really that's, that's not fair <laughs> that's not fair at all my little uh, my little brother just texted me talk, talking about i can't pronounce things right so now oh well it, it is like it is like it. Right. <laughs> but uh, i would say i want to piggyback on what you said in regards to relationships. How do you stop overthinking and use that example? Mm -hmm. I bur bury myself into 
so, a goal of mine. That's all I can do. Like bury myself into a goal and make that goal happen. And then slowly, you know, you forget about it. <laughs> See, that's a more like succinct way to say exactly what I said. No. <laughs> that's a better way to say it. <laughs> you, I'm succinct at times. Yeah, true. Very, very true. I mean, I'm, I was saying. I love you too, Megan. Compliment. Um, oh, wow. There are so many questions on this little question thing. But what happens when you finish everything you need to do and continue to overthink? Um, there is, there's never a time where I've finished everything that I need to do. And I don't say that like well, it's a bad thing. I just mean like there's always something that I could be doing. Like I have my blog. So, uh, I mean, I can write new articles. I can, you know, list new content. I can figure out my next photo shoot. I can work on new branding opportunities. And I think, I think that's the thing for people to know, which is what the underlying tone of what you're saying is pick up something else. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we, can all, we can all, we can all pick up something else. I've, in order for me not to be extremely bored, I'm always doing something, trying to work on some business, trying to get a better body than Hot Tyler, you know, and get better abs than you, which it seems impossible right now. Even though I'm doing everything, like, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with Tyler. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to surpass him. That's slight work. Uh, you, you, <laughs> but um, I think what you're saying is, like, just continue to do something, continue to find something. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what is your biggest fear? Yeah, I like this one. Um, Good question, Katie what, Jackson. On, on Katie, what level are we talking about? What is your biggest fear? Because, I mean, if I wake up out of my bed, and there's an alligator right there, I'm scared, right? <laughs> but then I would I say... you talking about alligators besides your bed, Mike. From a, from a relationship aspect, if we're, I don't know which, what sector we're talking about. From a relationship aspect, I would say um, falling madly in love with my lady, and she gives up on me. That's hella, that's hella, uh, that I'm sure for that. Sad. Yeah. Unrequited love. That. Un <laughs> Misha says, why is there an alligator in your bed anyways? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is a real, okay, this is a real A lot of people in Florida. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Okay, this is a really great question. Um, how do you deal with family pressure and find yourself outside of their vision without feeling guilty? That oh, you. a great question. You keep throwing these to me first. Okay. Um, I think I think what helps the most is just like winning your family onto your side and making sure that your family knows and understands like what your personal goals are, why they're important to you and how they can support. Um, so I, I was blessed that like my family has been pretty supportive of me. Like this past year, I traveled to the Miss Universe competition on Thanksgiving and best believe there was not a single family member that said, maybe you should think about changing your travel plans so that you can make it here for Thanksgiving. No, 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 no. I'm missing Thanksgiving this year, guys. I'm going to the Miss Universe competition. So I think just making sure that they know, like, these are, these are my goals, these are my standards, this is what I want for myself, and this is what makes me happy. Um, I think as long as they know that and they know how they can support you, I think that'll help to win your family to your side so that they know you just want to be happy and they just should be there to, to help you reach that, that happiness. What, you, what exactly was that question? It was, how do you deal with family pressure? Yep, how do you deal with family pressure and find yourself outside of their vision without feeling guilty? Boo boo, you gotta do you. Just simple fact. Like, <laughs> if you're not, not if you're not harming nobody and you're doing something for a better good, um, I think I posed this question on my on my feed one day. Um, I think that at times family won't have your back on certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, like if you're a lawyer per se, and you're like, I'm going to be an author and start writing books because we know that's a very hard thing to do. Um, family members may say, hey, you, you're making great money. You're doing amazing in this field. But at the end of the day, if you don't follow your passion, you're going to die out. Mm -hmm. and so, I always agree. And it looks like Dana Georgie does too. She says, I needed to hear that. Very true. Exactly. Okay, so we have some more self-love questions that people sent in. One of them is, what can I do? I like this question. What can I do each day mentally to improve my self-worth? Okay, Ooh. you got to go. You're Ooh. doing this one Ooh. first. Ooh. Ooh. No, I, I wanted this one. <laughs> I love this question. This is a, whoever wrote this question. Love you all day. What can I do each day mentally to improve my self worth? What I do personally, I literally tell myself every single day, I am MFN Mike. I'm a Mike MFN Johnson, right? So under my breath, I say MFN. I Mike MFN Johnson. So if your name is Curly Sue, I'm Curly MFN Sue. Right. And every every single day, every time I'm around Hot Tyler or somebody, 
Um, I'll just say something like that underneath my breath, and it just gives me the courage to know that it's I, it's it's within me to make it out, right? But then also, what I do personally is I surround myself with positive vibes. Like the music that I listen to in the morning isn't even music. It's like Les Brown or E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher or Tony Robbins. That's the music I listen to when I'm riding my bike, right? So just continually instill myself with positivity all around, right? My friends, they start talking some BS. I put them in. I put them in check right quick. My like, hey, we only come to this corner. We speak in positivity, right? Um, well, you can give me that. Like, do you feel like you were always at that point, or do you feel like there was ever a time where like you didn't have good self worth? Because I, I feel like there was no, definitely. Point, especially there was not always a point where I could tell my friends stuff like that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been. I'm. I'm one to personally. I'm one to speak my mind personally. I don't really. Yeah. Got in a couple of fights in high school because of it, but I'm going to speak my mind personally. And I think that this is why I always talk about uh, being your true authentic self because it's, it's beautiful. People want to follow. So we're all natural, naturally following somebody. I'm following somebody in this world. You're following somebody in this world. And for us to be a leader, someone, the only way for us to be a leader is in when we step into being our true authentic self, right? When we're unique about ourselves. And that's, that's the only way to do it. You said in the past, you may not have been that way. I've, I've always been a little asshole in that regard. Um, but then when, when someone comes up to you and says, hey, Chester, I, I like that you said that, that builds up your confidence and gives you, you know, a mindset of, oh, I can speak out. I can, I can love myself and be myself. But I'm going too far. I'm starting to bloviate. So my apologies. No, no, I think that was great. And I think I think you said something that I totally agree with. You said appreciating like the, the unique parts of yourself. Um, because I think it was Teddy Roosevelt, maybe FDR, somebody who said um, comparison is a thief of joy. And it's so true. I think there are a lot of people who have low self-worth um, and are unhappy with themselves because they constantly are comparing themselves to the other. Like, does my hair look as good as hers? does or am I as pretty as, as she is or he has more muscles than I do and I think yeah. if you are constantly comparing yourself to others you will have low self-worth so I think the important part um, the important thing that you can do every day is appreciating your own unique qualities and why that makes you special I think that helped me over time to build my own self-worth and confidence definitely I would say with that uh something that I personally do <clears throat> I'm always happy with where I'm at but I always uh, continue to want to strive to be a better individual. And I think that's a, a balance that we all have to play, which is understanding where you are today and being happy about who you are, right? Being happy about that I'm trying to grow my hair. My hair, to me, right now is really coarse, right? And I can look at somebody. My homeboys have locks already, dreadlocks. I'm like, man, I want that, but I'm, I'm happy and I'm embracing the current stage of my life, mm -hmm. right? I think that's what people need to realize. Embrace you. Embrace where you are. Embrace the journey, right? Embrace your differences, you know? And people love that. You're going to be a vessel to someone else. Exactly. I completely agree. Okay, there are a lot of questions about self-care during the pandemic. Uh, one of those questions was how to keep your spirits high during this time. It's on you first this time. <laughs> We're going to roll dice next time. Okay, <laughs> how to keep your spirits high. Uh, I think um, two things, maybe just one thing for me, I think just focusing on preparing myself for the future is what keeps my spirits high and thinking about, you know, how I can um, be prepped for like my career going forward, how I can improve my own personal skills so that I can explore new opportunities going forward. So just, I, I think, you know, being flexible generally about what we're doing now and just knowing that like, yeah, things are different, but you're going to make it through. And preparing yourself for what's next is what keeps me excited about, well, not even just really excited, just keeps my spirits um, at a higher level than they could be otherwise. Definitely. Um, for me, being honest, my spirits are not high 24 seven during this quarantine. I'm always speaking positive. You say what? I said real. Uh, yeah, I'm always uh, honest, authentic, real. And there's been times where I'm like, yo, I'm tired of looking at my 570 square foot apartment. Like, I'm just tired of looking at it. I'm tired of looking at my porcelain dog, you know, Mr. Scooby Snacks. I'm tired of doing it at times. And I think that that is what helps me by just being real in the moment. Like, this is how I feel, you know. And then talking to my grandma, for example, uh, 
she'll always bring my spirits up, right? She, me thinking about her right now just puts a smile on my face, right? Uh, <laughs> she just says the craziest things. <laughs> like, Mike, I'm starting a YouTube page. I'm going to become a YouTuber. Like, what? You're like 70. Wait, well, she just doesn't care. Cage? <laughs> yeah, she really wants to. <laughs> and so um, for me or my little sister, my little sister and I are complete opposites in the craziest ways, but she'll say, Mike, I'm scared because hot girl summer may not happen. And it just makes me laugh that I'm like, <laughs> that's what she's thinking about right now. But, you know, to or we can just move hot girl summer to Instagram. That's how we can make it happen. Move hot, no, she ain't hearing that. She don't need to hear that. No. <laughs> but I think for me to keep high spirits in this time is just to talk to different people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just talk to different people and see how they're doing in their world. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just to let them talk and you just listen, you know? And that's all it takes at times. That's what I would do. This is why, guys, I say that Mike is not really an introvert because he's talking about talking to people voluntarily. It's crazy. Okay. <laughs> my sister, my grandma, mom. <laughs> hey, whatever. Whatever you have to tell yourself. Okay, I love um, my queen. Rosie asked a really good question. She says, do you guys ever get imposter syndrome? Is, um, if so, how do you deal with it? I went first last time, so now it's your turn. I just went first. What do you mean? Did you? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I went second. Okay. Imposter syndrome, like, what it, I've heard of the term, but what does imposter syndrome mean exactly? Uh, imposter syndrome, like, getting to a certain place and feeling like everybody else knows what they're doing and you don't, but feeling like you don't belong there, like you're not prepared for it, um, like you're not skilled enough for it, that sort of yes, thing. Yes, 100%. I got a, a whole whole story on it, but I'm not going to say this story. Tell us your story. This is what this is for. Share. Tell, tell a story. All right. So when I became a financial advisor, um, I remember being in a room full of older, really nice, really respectful white men. I was in my 20s. I was a black guy. I was tattooed and had a few tattoos to my homeboys. They let me know that I'm not tatted. I just have a few. And um, You don't have any face tats, so... No, that's, that's, not, that's not happening. This new... To the, to, the, to the new kids on the block that get face <laughs> tats. That's not the move, homie. That is not the move. The face tats is not the move. Like, but I digress. So I was... Um, in a room, there's about maybe 25 of us. It was maybe two women and like 27 guys, and then like me, right? And another male. The rest of the other 27 guys were all white, older men, over 60. And I felt like I didn't belong. I literally had a panic attack. And my homeboys, they, they cursed me out some serious that day when I called them. Um, I, I felt like I was an imposter. I felt like I wasn't there. I felt like my credentials weren't you know, on the same level. I felt like I wasn't intelligent enough. I felt like they didn't respect me enough. I felt like, I felt all these things. And then after the fact, I realized none of them said any of that. That was all within myself. That was all in my head, right? Mm -hmm. And that that's a big time when I really, really started saying I'm Mike Emeth and Johnson underneath my breath. Because whenever I feel like I'm an imposter in a situation, like Zosie's Miss Universe, right? And that's I love that she asked that question because it's true. She's still, she's the woman in the universe right now, right? <laughs> you know, she's still, I love that she said it because it's so unique and so real and authentic that she still can feel that way, right? And we still have to, we still have to encourage ourselves each and every single day, you know? Oprah Winfrey is a household name, but I'm sure she still has to encourage herself every single day because those things, it's funny, the things that happen to us when we're young, like those those pivotal years when we're young, they they tend to stick with us, right? Yes. And oh my gosh, yes. Like they, they tend to stick with us. And so as we get older, it's like Legos. We have to just continue to build upon it, right? Every single day. You know, we were talking about working out and being in athletics. We can have the best body ever, but if we stop working out and stop building on it, we lose it. Mm -hmm. And having um, mental strength and having love of self is the same exact way. It's an everyday, everything we got to build on it. Exactly. I completely agree. And I think it's something, like you said, that everybody deals with. And mm -hmm. I think one of the, I think the first time or one of the first times that I started thinking more about it was I was reading two books kind of at the same time. I was reading Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg and I was reading Pretty Powerful by Ebony K. Williams. And they were both talking about the imposter syndrome, which was funny because these are two incredibly powerful women who are authors of these two different books. And I thought like, God, if you guys sometimes wonder if, what you're doing or if if what you're doing is the right thing like no wonder i'm feeling this way 
so I think that, you know, when it gets, when it comes down to imposter syndrome, you just have to remind yourself, like Mike said, of your qualifications, um, remind yourself that, you know, you are in the right place and that um, you are prepared for the moment that, that you're in. Um, one of the things that I really like that I, I read somewhere about destroying imposter syndrome was when you're about to walk into a very important meeting or presentation to work on your power poses. Have you heard of this, Mike, power poses? Let's do it. 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 Wait, I'm about to go ride my bike after this, so I'm going to have some days to do for you. You have to do, okay, what are some, what are some that you do? Yep, exactly. That's like one of my favorites. Yes, oh, yes exactly. exactly. And how long do you have to hold your power poses? Two seconds. Two minutes. Two minutes? Yeah. That's how I yeah, do it. So okay. power poses, very important. You can go into like a bathroom before whatever you're doing and do your power poses. And there's a study that talked about power poses and how it actually does have measurable effects on your level of confidence and the results that you get. I think the study was um, surrounding people who did power poses before a job interview and it measured the, the sort of, I don't know, results of the job interview. And it was really, really interesting. So look up power poses. Power poses are great to do if you're worried about imposter syndrome. Well, okay. on, to, on the imposter syndrome, uh, I want to be, I keep speaking about being authentic and stuff, right? I'm going to be mm -hmm. say something that I haven't said publicly before, but mm -hmm. I feel like an imposter at times. Oh, here it comes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I feel like I'm an imposter at times because I have built a following from a show that I had never watched before, but a show that I do appreciate now. And I almost feel like we hear some people are biracial. I feel like I'm bicultural. And I'm, I'm in now I'm in a new world that of a culture that I, I never knew nothing of before. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's about. I was exactly who I am in person as I was on the TV show, but it's almost now that when I post certain things on Twitter, for example, my newfound audience may not resonate with it. And so I'm like, man, you know, I know what that audience would resonate with, but then at the same time, I'm trying to bridge the gap mm -hmm. of what I grew up with. Right. And so for me, that's something that I'm, struggling with right now being bicultural and learning to how to bridge things and so mm -hmm. I think right now of my imposter state that I'm working on right now mm -hmm. yeah well and honestly since we're spilling tea now Let's uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of something that I dealt with I remember when I first started working with extra and doing interviews with extra and the first interview I ever did was with Millie Bobby Brown from Stranger Things and then after that, I did an interview with Zendaya. And then after that, it was with Lizzo. And so these are all incredibly powerful, well-known, successful women. And I just thought, why am I doing this? <laughs> I remember, I remember for, for the interview I did with Lizzo, we were going to crown her. And I dropped the crown. And it almost broke. And I was really stressed about it. And somebody took pictures of me in that interview. And like while I'm talking to Lizzo, <laughs> none of the pictures were usable because I wasn't smiling in any of them. And so I had to constantly, like before I do interviews now, I feel much more comfortable. I'm excited to be there. Um, and it, I think it's because like for a long time when I first started, I just thought like, I'm not qualified to do this. There's no way that I can, that I can do this. Even though like I'm an attorney, I used to interview people for a living. <laughs> and this is just a more fun version of that. Even though, you know, I was Miss USA. I've been in high pressure, high stress situations. I can handle this. None of that was at the forefront of my mind. I was just thinking like, I'm going to mess this up. So you just have to, you, you got to get through it. You got to remind yourself what you, the skills that you actually have. Definitely. We always, uh, what they taught me in the military was uh, that person puts their, their pants on one leg at a time too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, whoever they are. I if, like if I was, if I was around Lizzo, I would just be like, let's dance. That's all I would tell Lizzo. <laughs> <laughs> I think she did. No, no, no. She did a swimsuit walk. That's what she did. I would, yeah. See, I would have fun with Lizzo. Yeah, it was really, really cute. <laughs> Okay, so we have, okay, so these were interesting questions that you guys sent in. I sent these to Mike when we were talking about these, and I think, like, we both felt very passionate and um, about answering oh. these questions because we felt like it was really, really important that we send you guys this important message. Okay, so somebody sent in the question, um, and I'm going to read both of these questions because they're similar. Someone said, how to attract the perfect person, and right under it, we didn't highlight this one, Mike, but it's similar. Um, how do I become an attractive individual in terms of personality? Oh. I'll let you go first because you were very passionate about this one and I'll follow you. 
I was extremely passionate about this question last night. Like, I was uber passionate. How do I attract the perfect person? Baby, you the perfect person. Stop trying to attract somebody else. It's you, sweetheart. It's you, you, you. Like, do T U with the X in, in Spanish. It's you, baby. It's all about you. Like, in order to attract the perfect person, attract yourself. Like, seriously, if you could dress up, you know, and be proper and prim and all that stuff, but then once that fades away, they might not like it no more because it's not you. You have to be you, baby. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see who you are at the end of the day. I'm trying to be able to, in a playful man, I'm trying to be able to throw you in the ocean, come back out the ocean, I see who you are. That's what I'm trying to <laughs> I need you. I don't need nobody else. Mm -hmm. Nobody else but you. Last night I was super passionate about it and I had way more words. To be succinct, to attract the perfect person is you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, I think we both were um, not, we were angry. We just like, this was one of those moments where I just want to like take somebody by the shoulders and like shake them a little bit. Like, don't worry about attracting the perfect person or being attracted to other people um, because I think both of us appreciate, you know, confidence and self-love and that's really what you should be focused on. If you're just you and focus on being a complete and whole person, you shouldn't have to worry about attracting people um, because the right people are going to be surrounded or are, are going to be surrounding you. And so that's really all you need to concern yourself with is just like making sure you're in the place that you need to be in and, and you got some positive people around you. Absolutely. I mean, when I was on the show on uh, the bachelorette for those that don't know, it's, 30 of us gentlemen and one young lady, right? And mo for the most part, all 30 of us have completely different personalities. We look totally different. Mm -hmm. Like, we're just different people, right? And, it, and when you're in your thrust in that situation, like, oh my God. Like, everyone looks good. Everyone has a wonderful personality. Everyone, you know, has, is cultured. Mm -hmm. And every time I got interviewed by the producers, they would ask questions like, you know, how do you feel about your relationship with Hannah? That was a young lady's name. I was like, at the end of the day, I'm being me. If she don't like me, for me, that's perfectly fine because she's here to find her love, right? Her love don't have to be me per se. So be you, baby. Just be you. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's a great response. Okay, so Julia M. Marcel says, what if the person never finds you? Um, I wouldn't stress about that. I think when I, when I think about... Um, like me and my future, what I think about is I, I always lean heavily on my faith. And so I think about like, God has a path for me as a plan for me and it's right. It's not wrong. And so if that means like I meet the perfect person tomorrow, or if I've already met the perfect person, or if I'm supposed to be single, whatever it is, I, that I'm, I'm happy with whatever God has planned for me. Uh, because one of the things I was thinking about recently was how many incredibly successful women I know who aren't married, like Oprah, for example, like Shonda Rhimes, um, like Halle Berry. Well, Halle Berry's been married a couple of times, and I think she's got kids too. Um, but these women who have been through a number of different relationships and just, have just found happiness just being themselves. And so uh, you know, if that's your path and that's what God has for you, I think you just have to worry about that and just making your own self happy. Uh, because I think if you're constantly looking for happiness in another person, there's always going to be a problem because you're not a whole and happy and complete person yourself. So that's what you have to focus on first. It's just like me making sure I'm happy and I can make myself happy. And if somebody wants to join my happiness, like join the dance. But if not, I'm good just being me. I, I was uh, talking, I did a podcast with my homeboy, uh, Brian Abasolo, yesterday. And we were t uh, he asked me a question. Can you be in love with someone without loving yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought, it was a I thought it was a really powerful question. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, my answer is no. And the reason I say that is because you could be with that person for 13 years, 33 years, or 13 months, or three months, right? There's going to come a point to where you're, you're going you're gonna to realize that your partner isn't making you happy. They could be doing every single thing right, like textbook perfection, right? At the end of the day, it's going to come, you're going to realize it's going to come from within. It's your perspective of things, right? I know people, my little sister, for example, I love talking about my sister, right? She has told me flat out, she's dated perfect gentlemen, but she didn't like them for one reason or another, right? And so both for the, both of those individuals, my sister was being, you know, introspective, which is a beautiful thing, and realizing that her happiness has to come from her, right? And that dude needs to realize, the dude that she was talking about probably at that time, needs to realize, hey, his, his qualities are not meant for my sister, right? But maybe a wonderful thing for another individual. And so 
I, I'm sorry, I just get really passionate about things like that. I want, for who, if that lady is listening to who asked that question, Chesley and I wanted to like individually reach out to you, like, and wanted to just talk to you. Like, you really did. Yeah, because you just, you know, just don't worry about being attracted to other people. Just be, be yourself, be whole, be happy by yourself. And... You, may, you know, when uh, Kevin Hart, he speaks with his fingers, that's what you do. I usually wear really long acrylic nails, like fake nails, and I took them off yesterday, and like, I'm just, it's, it feels very weird. Like, I feel like I have catcher's mitts on, on like, attached to my arms. It's very strange. So I cannot wait until I can go to the nail salon again. I want to yeah. definitely, I want to compliment you for that and myself because I said I was going to talk about it, but I didn't. But you actually did, which is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> threw, myself, threw myself out there. Okay, I like this question. We talked about this before. What do you both think about the love language Ooh. book? Oh my gosh, I think it's so dope. I think Mike has it and is actually reading it right now. So he's probably going to get it. Uh, but the love yeah. language book, there you go. Yes. Yes, this is it. The love languages. I don't read through this book so many times. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, I can't remember the name of the girl who just or the person who just asked that. Where is this? Uh, KLC. I don't know how to say your name on um, your username, but great question. Okay, so the, for those who don't know, the love language book. Um, it's who is it written by? Gary Chapman. Gary Chapman. Okay, it's a great book. What Gary talks about is. Um, the five different love languages. He refers to love languages as just like ways to love your partner and talks about how people don't always give or receive love the same way. And so he says that there are five different languages where you can, that you can use to give or receive love. And knowing yours and knowing your partner's is very important so that you can give love the way that your partner needs to, to receive love. I, I, I love the book. I think that uh, I did it in it. Excuse me, an uh, Enneagram test as well. I think the Enneagram test goes a little bit deeper than five love languages. Mm -hmm. But I feel that with the five love languages, when I first heard of it, I did the quiz. The quiz doesn't do it justice at all. It's like if you read the book and then they come out with a movie, the movie never really does a book justice. There's um, a movie? Oh, oh, no, you were no, saying no. as an example. Example. Like, example. There's a movie to the five love languages? <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe. I'm, we should. I'm. But, um, I think that people have to read the book and not just do the uh, quiz because I thought, I was like, oh, I'm a dude. I like touching my lady. I'm a physical touch, right? That's so <laughs> niche of me to say at the time. And so, I like, I actually. I think he like, says actually, in the book, too. I think he says, like, most guys think that they're yeah, like, physical touch. He, he does say it. It's like, oh, we're a guy. I like touching my lady. No, it don't work like that. And so, um, for me, my personal love language is uh, quality time. But then if you read the book, he talks about dialects. Dialects. Yes, and my dialect is quality communication, right? So quality time is, uh, to me, but quality communication. We, if it's just five minutes that I get to talk to you every single day, but that five minutes is deep, I'm like, I'm, I'm into you, right? I'm, uh, mm -hmm. My attention. It could be five hours, but first off, I ain't talking on the phone for no five hours. It's just not me. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. Yeah. yeah, highly recommend reading The Five Love Languages. Um, the five love languages themselves are physical touch, um, giving or receiving gifts, uh, quality time. Acts of service. Acts of service. And what's the last one? The last one is physical, yeah, physical touch. I already said physical touch. Oh, words of affirmation. There you go. Words of affirmation. That's it. My love language is also quality time, but acts of service is like a cool second to that one. Um, so it's really, really important to, like, know what your love language is and if you're in a relationship um, and uh, and specifically know what your dialect is. Because a lot of people, like, yeah, I mean, dialect like is yeah, yeah, like, my dialect is, like, uh, actually, I don't really know, think that I know that. Yeah, you got to pick it back up. I would say uh, I took pieces from this book and uh, instilled it in when, as I was writing my book. Like, at the end of this book, you have exercises. Mm -hmm. um, you have, you know, I would say kind of mantras in this book. And that's what I have in my book exactly. I got it from this book right here. So if you like this book, definitely get my book coming out. Mm, coming out I in September. A, I had to plug myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is for. Um, okay, I'm looking back through these questions. Oh, somebody said, what are your love languages? Um, oh, we yeah. talk about this, yeah. Let's talk about that. Ooh, you this is one a up. great one. Oh, thank you, Ray Said It, for this great I like, I like that username, Ray Said It. What's up, Ray? 
Ray underscore said it. Um, well, yeah. Okay, so when are the times when it's important to be selfish for you? <laughs> Where's my <Yo>. dice? <laughs> you need to be rolling dice here. Um, okay, when are the times where it's important to be selfish? Um, uh, you know, I think it, I, th I really do think it depends. Think it depends <laughs> say what you want to say. <laughs> well, I think it, well, I think it depends on whether or not you're in a relationship, and I think it uh, it depends on like your job, your friends. I think it depends on a lot of different factors. So it really isn't like a black and white answer. Um, I think one of the things I struggled <laughs> with in relationships is being selfish and self centered. If I'm being self aware right now, so but I think being aware of that helped me because I knew in relationships that I just tend to be a selfish person. So I was like always cheating myself. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I hate to tell on myself. But um, so I, I think it, it just depends. I think when you're single, you have a lot more room to be selfish and sort of self-centered. Um, and uh, I, I, yeah, it just, it really depends. I wish there was like a situation I could give you. Um, but I think there are times when there are other people who clearly just need to be put before yourself. Like if there's somebody in your family who is struggling, having a really hard time, I think you can put away your alone time for five minutes and go check on that person. Um, that's a time when you don't need to be selfish. Um, whereas other times, if you feel like you're really low on energy and you just need a little time for yourself, you just need to just shut and lock the door and take a 20 minute shower so that you can recharge and be there for other people. I think that's fine too. So there's really not like a black and white answer that I can give you. There's just, there's a lot of gray there. A lot of gray. I'll say, uh, I actually speak about this as well in my book. I talk about how I overcame a uh, incredibly dark period of my life. And I was like super depressed and down. And the, the one thing that helped me get out of it was I was incredibly introspective and I realized that I'm a selfish individual. And what I mean by that you is... <laughs> no, nah, hear me out, though. What I, what I mean by that is, like, I realized I just want to be happy. At the end of the day, my mom used to always say, because I used to want to, like, get money and cut other people's houses and cut other people's grass, and she would say, start in your own backyard first, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I was really, really depressed, it finally dawned on me that I am incredibly selfish. I just want to be happy, right? And... I have to take care of my own backyard first before I can help anyone else, right? And so I realized if I literally can make somebody else smile, guess what it does for me in return? Makes you like, smile. It makes me smile straight up. And when I'm smiling, I, when I'm genuinely smiling, I, it makes me a little bit happier. That's awesome. You know? And so I, t I took the word selfish and I like flipped it. I made it my own and I said, I can be selfish, but you can be positively selfish, right? If I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm making you happy and doing something for you and it's making me happy in return, we Gucci. We good. Exactly. I totally agree. I think that's incredible. And I think you're right in that. Like, there are a lot of times where you just need to take care of you. Okay, somebody asked this. And this is also a question on our question list. I think I skipped it. So Misha says, yes. how are you staying motivated during these times? Okay, I answered first last time. So it's your turn now. All right, how am I staying motivated during these times? Because my little sister tells me it's hot girl summer coming up. <laughs> <laughs> no, on a, on, a, on, a, on a serious note, how do I stay motivated? I have my accountability partners. Chesley's always talking noise, saying always. I'm not doing it. Oh, cool. <laughs> always. In fact, I called Mike out on Instagram because you were supposed to be my accountability partner for my 600 abs every day. And then I, a day I do around, my 600 abs. He didn't do his abs because he didn't tell me. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Just not, you know, 99% of the time. <laughs> Maybe 40. But for me, I think it's uh, having accountability partners, which I definitely do have. Thank you. And I think it's beautiful to, like, literally take time to just – I like to work in blocks, right? And so what I mean by that is I might go hard for five hours, and then I need an hour. I told you this, Chesley. I need an hour to just turn off my cell phone, throw the phone away, and just do nothing, mm -hmm. right? That little recharge – and then go hard again for five more hours, right? Um, but that's my, that's how I stay motivated is just taking the time to recharge and do nothing. And then it, it's like a cheat meal almost. Like if I ride my bike today, which I am, and then I feel like, okay, that motivated me a little bit. Now I could like chill for another two hours. Then I might check some emails. You know, it's, it's about, it's just about balance. That's all it really is. Mm-hmm. 
somebody, okay, this is kind of random, but somebody once told me that if you're in a meeting and you're not paying attention and then all of a sudden the attention goes to you, you can always show that you're like in tune by saying, it's really all about balance. So if you're ever in a meeting <laughs> and you haven't been paying attention, you don't know what's going on, literally in it. And I actually tested this out, it works. Oh my <laughs> God. Keep that in your back pocket, guys. If you're for, like, on those Zoom calls where you, you're clearly tuned out and then they're like, hey, James, do you have a thought on this? Yeah, guys, I just, I really think it's all about balance. And I was so much. Um, <laughs> if my team is listening right now, that answer is not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, because now you've heard it, but everybody else can use that too. No, well, fact. Okay. Absolutely. So, so the question was, how do you stay motivated? I think for me, the the reason that, or the way that I stay motivated is just by like laying out my tasks in like little bites every day. Yes. So um, rather than saying like, uh, I don't know, I need to work on my blog today. Like that is really confusing. How long is that going to take me? And so when I see that as a list in my to-do list, I think like work on my blog, what does that even mean? Should I be writing five articles or revising the whole thing? So rather than like writing down those huge things, I just write down little bites like, okay, instead of work on blog, I'll say, write one article, tiny little bite, or I'll say, you know, um, edit one photo set, tiny little bite. So by, by organizing my day and those like little, little tiny tasks, um, I, I mark those tasks off a lot quicker. And then I feel motivated because I'm thinking like, oh my God, look, I just crossed off three things on my to-do list. I can probably tackle two more by the end of the day. So I think just like, just condensing your day into just little small accomplishments really helps. A little small accomplishments, not so much. Me. <laughs> Always. <laughs> okay, uh, another person, back to the, I named this this section of our question block, uh, dating and attractive, because those were all these questions were, this is what all these questions were about. Oh. Um, somebody said, how to meet new people, adulthood is so lonely. That makes me sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually have to, uh, okay, Chessie, you don't know this story, and this proves that I'm an introvert. Okay, so I was going to say, I, please, let the extrovert talk. So when I was in the Air Force, um, I was like, when I was in the dorms, I was enlisted. When I was in the dorms, I was like the dorm chief or whatever, mm -hmm. and just the person that's in the dorm, the president of the dorms, right? And I would just always be by myself, like all the time, 100% of the time, and it's just because I don't, I'm an adult. I don't know how to make friends. Like when you're a kid, you know, you go to school and you're forced to be around an individual and that's how you make friends, right? But as an adult, you go to work, you come home, you do your own thing. And that was my whole life, right? And then my home, one of, he's now my homeboy. But at the time, dude knocked on my door. He's like, hey, so you want to play video games? I'm like, like, so you, you, you a grown man? I didn't think it was cute. I thought it was weird. I'm like, <laughs> what you asking me to play games for, bro? Like what you, but at the time, I mean, I, I didn't have nothing else to do. I was just by myself all the time. Like, oh, it is lonely at times. I ain't going to lie about it. And so I play games with them. But I would say uh, it's pretty cool. What I do, what I have, I haven't met any friends in my apartment complex here, per se. Um, but when I ride my bike now, when I'm doing things that I want to do, be you, back to the previous question, when I'm doing things that I want to do, uh, like when I was riding my bike, one of my neighbors said, oh, man, that's a really cool bike. Where'd you get it from? And we sparked up a conversation, he and I. And so I think, obviously, I wanted to take you somewhere. We could be friends, but I don't, I'm just kind of introverted. But how to meet people, just do what you want to do, things that are outside of your four walls in your house. <laughs> that's what I would say. Yes, I agree. I agree. I also continue to disagree that you're an introvert. Guys, I have I to am an introvert. Mike. Mike's talking all this mess about somebody playing games. Meanwhile, this man plays spades with his friends like every night. Spades is not, that's life. That's, that's livelihood. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody want to play me in spades, DM me. I got you. I'm going to beat you. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, whatever you have to say. I'm trying to down this poor man, invite you to play some video games. Okay. Um, <laughs> how to meet new people. I think there's so I think, you know, one of the things I thought about with regard to like my own friendships is like, if I want to have good friends, I need to be a good friend. So if you are looking to make new friendships, I think you should get up the courage to reach out and be a good friend to other people, whether that's people that you work with, or like Mike said, finding like interests that you have um, that you share with other people. 
um, is always good. I've made friendships with people, so many people on Instagram, like, which is funny. Like people always talk about like, oh my gosh, you know, I met this guy on Instagram and now we're dating. Guys, you can find more than just relationships on Instagram. You can find friendships. Like there's so many girls whose pictures, I would just, you know, randomly see them on the explore page or something and like a bunch of pictures. And all of a sudden, like we're following each other and now we're friends. In fact, yeah, one of my good friends, um, her name's Lex. She actually was on a live with me last week, I want to say. Um, she and I were both signed up to do this local pageant together back in, I think it was like 2014. And she ended up um, dropping out of the pageant last minute because she had an internship that it conflicted with. And uh, I had seen her name on the list and then it disappeared and I thought it was weird. So we ended up um, somehow becoming Facebook friends. I don't know how we found each other. And then maybe a few months after the pageant, uh, she and I like set up like a date almost and we, we she was out at some club in Charlotte she was like do you want to come out and I was like sure and so I went out and she's one of my closest friends now so you could find friends on Facebook or Instagram like yeah I don't know if that works for guys I think it really does honestly um <laughs> I think I think what, what worked was because like we both did pageants so we shared that interest she was in law school I was in law school so we knew a lot of the same people and it just kind of kind of worked out why do you right. think that doesn't work for guys I, you're not gonna it catch me for you you ain't gonna catch me liking a bunch of dudes pictures and be like bro let's hang out <laughs> well uh, maybe maybe not maybe not like that but like I mean you talk about working out a lot what if you saw somebody some guy who was like you know, on your explore page who happened to be bike riding in San Antonio, you might be like, hey, what, how long do you usually ride every day? Or ask him a question about his workout routine or something like that. That happens. It happens. I'm an introvert. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> You're not an introvert, Mike. I, hate I will say this. I have to break it to you. I'm, I'm an introvert. I have like, a, <laughs> there's people on IG that like before, you know, going on TV, I was only following like 80 people mm -hmm. on IG. And it's because like my are my interests like I'm really interested in uh, learning how to be more financially intelligent, and so I would follow them, and then I would see like somebody else always commenting on this financial page, mm -hmm. and so I, would, I I then went to their page and they're talking about finances, and so then we befriended each other via IG, but that's as far as it went. Like it wasn't like hey, I'm gonna be in Houston. What's up? You gonna be in Houston? All right, let's go hang out. But why not? That's so possible. Obviously, within uh, reason. Like, you do have to be careful that you don't meet, like, weird, creepy people online and then well, end up being, like, kidnapped or something. So, also very important. But still, like, you can you can so meet people online. I think there are even some apps. Like, there's, I think there are some dating apps that have, like, a... Hey, BFF, I'm Bumble, Bumble BFF, I've heard of. Yeah, exactly. So, you can do some of those apps, too. I would do that. I'm just, you know, I got a ton of friends, and I, I can barely even see the friends that I have. So... <laughs> Um, okay, so we, it looks like we have time for one, maybe two more questions. Mike, I'll give you the option here. We have, like, pick between these two. Someone says, what sparked your passion for self-love and self-care? Uh, another person said, what do I do to stop seeking validation from people that stopped caring? Which one of those? Uh, which one are you going to answer first? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> like how I flipped that right quick. <laughs> stop putting me on the <laughs> block. Okay. Um, We'll do this one. This is from Bailey Cormick. She says, what sparked your passion of self-love slash self-care? I'll answer it. I feel like I'll you answer should this. answer this first, Mike. You have a yeah. look. No, I haven't. I was about to say, I'll answer it first. This is since you picked this one. I see what you did there. You reversed the reverse. Mm -hmm. How you do it like that? Okay. So what sparked my interest in self-love and self-care? Simple. Um, I was in a relationship. I'm, as a dude, I feel like I'm always trying to fix things and instead of, like, listen Right. I'm always like, oh, just, just let's just fix it instead of just like sometimes you just be allowing that person to vent. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was in a relationship and um, we broke up. And then, you know, when you try to get back in a relationship like years later, see if it's still you got still got sparks or whatever. We ain't have no sparks. But we, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but we we uh, we uh, went to a, a club. And to me, I think she is absolutely gorgeous. I think she has an amazing figure, and she felt fat. And uh, she, so far to the point to where she had a panic attack, and we had to leave, and she almost threw up. And it really hurt my heart because I'm like, man, in my eyes, I'm like, girl, you the best thing up here, you know? And uh, But I didn't say that. It was just how I was thinking, right? And so I allowed her to just vent and, and or have her own time. And then I had a best friend. Uh, well, not a best friend. I had one of my homegirls from, like, middle school on up. She was a financial client of mine. 
knew her for the last 20 years. She committed suicide. And then I had another homegirl. She, uh, she sent me a picture of herself. She's a, uh, what we, what we would call somebody I could, I could hold in, you know, in the bed. She's a, a bigger woman. And, uh, it was two of her friends on either side of her in this picture. And she sent it to me and she said, Mike, I hate this picture. I've been looking at it for hours and I've been crying over this picture for hours. Um, and I'm only sending it to you because for some reason she said, I felt that she felt that I know how to be honest to her, but at the same time can encourage her. Right. And after those three events had happened and then one of my homeboys telling me something and just dealing with people that commit suicide in the military, I realized like there's a commonality within all of these things. And it's just not, establishing love of self, not establishing a certain confidence within self, a, a certain motto to yourself to, to live by, right? A certain moral compass to, to live by within self. And being that dude again, I mean, I grew up with all women, my mom, my sister, my grandma. I just wanted to, to do my part because one of my uh, mentors always told me, don't ever come to me with a problem unless you have a solution that you think. Mm. And so, you know, I've gone down a path of creating solutions for people to love themselves more just so they could get that promotion that they want, so they can make more money, so that they can, you know, love themselves more, so that they can, you know, get back into the gym, so that they can, you know, be a better parent. And I can go forever on that, but I'll stop right there. That's so sweet. Thank you for sharing that. I, could, I couldn't imagine. Well, I'm glad that there are so many people that clearly know that they can lean on you when they're going through hard times. So that's really good. And I'm glad that you've turned that struggle into something bright, like by having your book. Facts. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, you ain't gonna answer? <laughs> no, I. Th <laughs> All right, you're good. You're good. You're good. No, I'm not going to answer after that answer. My God, I'm trying not to cry. Um, but that was a great answer, seriously. And I'm just like I said, I'm glad that you turned that into something positive. Um, Definitely. So. so thank you, everybody. I'm trying to close before we get cut off. <laughs> And then Instagram kicks us off. FYI, guys, if you are on an Instagram live for longer than an hour, Instagram will kick you off. Um, it'll just shut the, the whole live down, which happened on our last live. So mm -hmm. um, thank you all. You guys had some great questions. Obviously, we only, you know, hit the surface when it came to answering um, questions because we had so many of them beforehand and during this. Um, but thanks for hanging with us. And uh, maybe we'll see you guys again soon. And thanks, Mike, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to tell everybody, love and Lysol. Love and light song. That's all this week. That's what we got going on right now. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Have a good one. All right, you too. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Mike's awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. He's incredible, um, super authentic, and I'm glad that he shared so many real stories with you guys um, because he's a great guy, um, really means well, and he's got some great advice for you guys. So make sure you check out his book. He said his book's going to be out in September, so make sure to snatch that up. And catch us next time. Hope you guys enjoyed. See ya. Happy Thursday.